Well, good afternoon, FBN. Um, just wanted to take some time and, and kind of go over with you guys just some thoughts I've been having on, on worship. I kind of feel the need to do this um, because our worship services coming up in the near future are probably going to look and feel a little different than what um, we've all come to know, um, what we're all used to. And, and recently I read an article about the potential of singing in the church being withheld. Um, that um, there was just kind of this, this research being done that, that the virus could take kind of an aerosol form um, and that we sh shouldn't be singing in churches. Uh, However, this isn't the case for us at FBN. Um, leadership here, we've all talked about, uh, about what our services would look like when we got back together. Singing was not um, taken off the table yet, thankfully. Um, it's something that, that I'm pretty passionate about, you may have guessed. Uh, so I'm excited about that. But still, um, I wanted to kind of make something very clear, even given that thought, um, that our worship doesn't change. Right? Our worship of God is not dependent upon us having music the way that we like it or the way that we're used to having it. Our worship isn't dependent upon our comforts or our circumstances. I say this knowing that even though we know our worship isn't dependent upon those things, oftentimes um, we make it that way, right? And so we are and we will be for a while in a unique time, especially in the church's history. Right? Thankfully, we have the technology and the means to still continue meeting together, to still continue worshiping together, I mean, even virtually. But now, by now, you've probably felt the distance. Right? I know for me, it, it, it's tangible now. I think at the very beginning it was, um, we'll get back together soon enough. But now it's been a while and we feel it. And with that comes frustration. I've, I've experienced all of it as well. Um, the emotional roller coaster of, of, of feeling encouraged and ready for whatever God would bring my way to the, the, the lows, the emotional lows, the discouraged feelings of apathy at times. Right? Now what's crazy is that we tend to let that emotional roller coaster um, affect our view of God. Right? We kind of base our view of God off of our current circumstances and how our life is going. If it's good, then we love God, and if it's bad, then we kind of ignore Him or resent Him. I'm not, I'm not saying that's for everybody, but it kind of tends to be the general consensus, right? It's our relationship with Him and our, and our worship of Him. They all kind of ride that roller coaster with us. And the way that we worship Him becomes subject to our experience in life. And I think the danger here is that we simply begin to go through the motions. We kind of put on a show and we can easily turn on the service video um, that we've been broadcasting, um, have it in the background of our morning, but really not pay attention, um, still feel like we did church, right? Um, and that's just an example, or maybe we've just found out that we really relied on the gatherings of the church. And without them, our lives have not really been marked by worship, not been marked by Him at all. So one thing's for certain, this pandemic has done a really good job of showing us, of just revealing in us what we truly worship, where our hearts are truly at. So Jesus made this distinction between kind of the inner heart of worship and the outer expression of it. And in Matthew 15, eight through nine, it says, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me. So Jesus basically says there that they really aren't even worshiping him. Why? Because it was hollow. It was void of passion and love for Jesus. Its motive was empty. So we can do as many good things as we want to and go to as many church services as we want to and never actually be worshiping God if it's all external and nothing is happening in your heart towards God. It starts with the heart. So what is authentic worship? And I think it starts with right thinking. So. Um, the reason, like I said, that I wanted to make this video is because I wanted to kind of get back to the, to the heart of worship, to be cliche, right? The idea of what worship is and what it's not. Um, and really singing is a big part of worship, but it's not worship in its fullness, not the totality of worship, right? Um, and, and, and like I said, this was brought to mind because the potential of not singing 
uh, maybe cause a little bit of panic in me. But then I was like, well, singing's not how I worship, right? So we, I wanted to kind of tackle this mindset of like, if I can't worship in the way that I prefer to worship, then I can't worship. And I, and I think that, that we're, we're sorely mistaken if that's our stance, which is why I wanted to get back to what is authentic worship. And like I said, I think it starts with, with right thinking. So by now, like I said, we know that worship isn't just singing, but it's so much more. It's, it's our life, right? It's our response to a holy God. So John 4, 23 and 24, uh, we're told that the true worshipers worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Spirit being who we are and the truth being our understanding of God and who He is. He is truth. Our worship is, is dependent upon our grasp of God's supreme value. Right? You, you hear us say this quote all the time, but what you think about God is the most important thing about you. Right? Or maybe you could even uh, reword it to say what you know about God, what you believe about God. We'll say that. What do you believe about God is the most important thing about you because from that shapes everything else about who you are, about the way that you live. Everything that you do is based off that foundation, the conviction of your heart between you and God and, and what you believe about Him. Like I said, our worship is dependent upon our grasp of God's supreme value. It's based on a right understanding of God's nature and a right valuing of God's worth. His worth is infinite and therefore true worship is a valuing or a treasuring of Him above all other things. If He is infinite, then His worth is infinite, right? So we delight in Him, we are satisfied in Him, and we treasure Him, and we revere Him. All of these things are inner responses to our view of God and reflect His infinite worth. So this is what worship is and what it was designed to do right here. It was to put the supreme worth of God on display. The word worship in English literally came from an old English word that meant to give worth to something. And that's what we are doing again, not through simply singing, but by living. We are putting the supreme worth of God on display. Hebrews 13, 15 through 16 say, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess His name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Now, I got a lot of this from an article I found from John Piper. It was just so rich and full of, of such truth. He says, those two verses begin and end with the same term, sacrifice. Now, of course, the sacrifice is an echo from the Old Testament sacrifices, which were at the center of the worship and were to display the value of God as we gave up a bull or a goat and showed that God is precious to us. And so from all of this, we get to the outer expression of worship. We had the inner essence of worship, but now we have the outer expression. It's that inner valuing becoming visible. This happens in two ways, right? We have acts of the mouth, meaning praise and repentance. Praise and repentance. And then we have acts of love, which is being the body being the hands and feet of Christ, by putting on display the supreme value of God by what we are willing to sacrifice for the good of others. We serve not to be seen, but to make Him seen, right? To put His glory on display. Luke 6.45 tells us that the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So it only makes sense that if Christ is your life, if you are passionately pursuing Him, that words of praise and repentance would flow from you, that words of love and of grace, words of truth would come from your lips. There's so much that we could keep diving into when it comes to this. But for us here at FBN, from now and throughout the future gatherings that we have, this is how we worship. This is how we understand worship. If corporate singing was prohibited, the heart of worship would not change. 
right? Even though we're singing in our homes, the heart of worship does not change. Even though we can't physically gather, gather together right now, our hearts of worship do not change. The way that we love others, the way that we pursue others does not change. The way that we display Christ in our life should not change given our circumstances. I know a lot of us have been affected extremely negatively by the impact of COVID, but God is still worth all of our life, all of our devotion, all of our praise and thanksgiving, right? We still should have immense gratitude in our hearts for our Savior. He is still worthy of all of our worship. He's still worthy of your entire life, right? Like I said, singing is only part of it. And like I said previously, I don't see us not singing. I think that we're going to be singing. I know that we're going to be singing. But if you were worried about maybe wearing a mask while you sing or the space between us as we gather, the six feet um, di- you know, perimeter around every family unit or whatever the case may be, just remember God is so much greater than all of this and he's worth so much more than we could ever give. So while we are here, we will live lives of worship through whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. We're not gonna let our worship and our attitude and our view of God be shaped by the circumstances that we find ourselves in, right? Like I said, we have so much to be thankful for, so much to be grateful for, and our hearts should be set upon Him and Him alone, right? When everything else else perishes, when everything else gives way, He remains, He is steadfast and He is sure He is true. And so we worship him in spirit and in truth. We love you guys. We're excited to gather together, but we know that gathering together is not the end all be all of who we are as a body of believers, right? Let's make him famous now in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our workplaces, uh, with our kids, with our peers, with our friends. Let's exalt the name of Jesus in our lives. Let's live life of, lives of worship together. Love you guys.